Welcome back Wednesday Wanderers. It's Ranger Erin again and we're wondering today about poison ivy. So this is something that every outdoors person should know about. When you're going out on hikes, poison ivy is all over the United States, all over Canada, Mexico. Uh, so it's pretty much every forested area you're going to want to go into. And we got to be a little bit aware of this because it can be pretty serious if you touch it. So some people, when they touch poison ivy, all they get is just a little bit of an itchy rash, but for some people it can make them feel really, really bad. So we need to be careful about this plant out here in the wild. So poison ivy, I always like to say, leaves of three, let them be. Not every plant with three leaves is gonna be poison ivy, but if you're always aware of those plants with three leaves, you're gonna be a little bit better off. So poison ivy is gonna have three leaves, and the two leaves on the side are going to be mirror images of each other. So you can fold the whole plant up and then unfold it and they're going to be totally symmetrical down the middle. So our poison ivy really likes these forested areas, especially sunny spots in a forest, but it's also going to grow in a field. So again, pretty much everywhere you go, you're going to need to be aware of where you're stepping or where you're resting your hand because it can be a plant that's low on the ground, a small soft plant. It can be a medium sized shrub. It can be a vine. So there's a lot of different ways that we can find poison ivy out here. So what happens? Why is it bad to get in contact with that poison ivy? When you touch poison ivy, it's got a little bit of an oil inside of its sap. So that sap is kind of like the juiciness of the plant. And once that comes out, you don't even have to break it. That oil is going to be on the surface of the plant. If you get that on your skin, your skin is just going to have a reaction to it. So that rash is just kind of like that angry skin, right? So it might be itchy, it might hurt, it might be just red and raised. Some people even get blisters. So everybody's going to re react to it a little bit differently. Uh, but the more you come in contact with it, the worse your reactions are going to be. So the less you can touch it in your life, the better. But I don't want you to worry if you accidentally touch it one time because all you have to do is get back to a sink, wash it with soap and water, and then hopefully you won't have had that reaction that small amount of time. But you can, you can wash away that oil and then you can help yourself from getting that reaction. So if you just leave it on there, you're gonna get a worse reaction. You can kinda help to keep that rash a little bit of a smaller rash. The other thing that you need to be aware about is because it's that oil that's kind of on the surface of it, even if you just kind of get it on your clothes, you brush by it on your clothes, that oil can get on your clothes. And even if you never touch that poison ivy, if you then touch your clothes where your clothes touched it, then you're gonna get that oil and you can get that reaction again. And the same thing goes with letting your dog loose out in a field your dog's gonna walk through that poison ivy, the oil's gonna get on their fur, you're gonna pet their fur, and then you're gonna get poison ivy. And you're gonna be like, I didn't even see poison ivy in the last couple of days, I don't know how that happened. So definitely keep your dog on a leash so that they don't get into poison ivy so you don't get it. The funny thing about that dog getting into the poison ivy is that your dog's never gonna notice it because most animals aren't allergic to it the way that humans are. So for us going out into the woods and fields and going on hikes, poison ivy is kind of this big deal to us, but all these other animals aren't worried about it at all. So it's not really defensive for the plant because we're the only ones that get affected by it. So a lot of these other animals are out here. They're not just walking up against it, but they're gonna eat it. So our white-tailed deer and our black bears, they're gonna love this stuff. There's a lot of our herbivores that are gonna happily munch on some poison ivy. So even though it's a big deal to us and we wanna be careful about it, it's still an important part of our habitat. When you're going out on your poison ivy hike, one of the best things that you can do for yourself is to wear long pants. So those long pants or maybe some tall socks are gonna to help to give you a little bit of protection. And we're looking for a plant Leaves of three, let it be, right over here. We've got our poison ivy. I'm going to be very careful not to touch it, but you notice it's got that almond shape. One, two, three. And then around the edges, it's got a little bit of a serration. So you can see that it's not a totally smooth edge. It kind of comes out, bumps in a little bit, uh, bumps in a little bit. And then on the outer edges, bumps in, bumps in. Same thing on the other side, bumps in, bumps in. It's got little spots of red in the fall 
it'll start to get some spots all over the leaves and then really when it's ready to drop it's going to be brilliantly red so the whole thing is going to turn red so red is definitely a sign that you might be looking at poison ivy as well and then you also want to look to see if it's a little bit glossy so is it a little bit shiny and these ones underneath here these are a little bit shinier than this top one but you're kind of looking for that how shiny is it but even if it's not shiny like this one isn't terribly shiny just don't touch it if you're ever not sure just leave it alone so not all of our leaves of three are gonna be poison ivy so these in here one two three same shape as our poison ivy and it's got that almond shape but I want you to notice it's totally missing that serration along the edge so it's got a smooth edge this is not poison ivy so even though there's gonna be a lot of plants that have leaves of three out here take a close look at them and make sure that what you're looking at is actually poison ivy and if you ever have a question about it just don't touch it so this plant right here looks exactly like our poison ivy it's got the same almond shape the serrated leaves it's mirror image on either side three leaves and then it's even got the red on it but this is not poison ivy this is the trickiest one of all this is a baby box elder tree and the only way that you can tell the difference is that this is actually just a little bit less glossy so don't worry about trying to tell the difference between those two but know that sometimes what you're looking at just might not be poison ivy it might just be that young sapling tree that is pretending to be poison ivy for an indoor activity what i've got for you is in a field of poison ivy so all you're going to need is you're going to need a big roll of string i chose the color green because it's going to be our poison ivy field you need a little bit of tape and maybe some furniture that you can move around you're going to string up the string and tape it to the walls about a foot above the ground so you've got a little bit of space between each area and you're just going to make a big web and we're going to pretend that all of the string is poison ivy so you have to avoid all of it and once you get finished with that you can challenge yourself or challenge a family member to try and make it through that field of poison ivy without touching any of the poison ivy so you can't even brush against the string Well, thank you, Wednesday Wanderers. I'll catch you next time and always be on the lookout for that poison ivy.